Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It is great to be back at our embassy in Washington. This has been a productive week. I attended the annual meetings of the IMF and World Bank, as well as meetings of the G7 and G20 finance ministers and central bank governors. At these meetings, Canada and our partners discussed the actions needed to end the pandemic and the actions needed to lay the groundwork for a recovery that is green, equitable, and resilient. Part of building an equitable recovery is strengthening international tax fairness, ending the global race to the bottom in corporate tax, and ensuring that all corporations, including the world's largest, pay their fair share. That's why last Friday's agreement of 136 countries, including Canada, on the elements of the landmark two-pillar plan on international tax reform is so significant. Canada's priority and our preference has always been a multilateral agreement. We have a clear and compelling national interest in this multilateral deal which protects against erosion of our tax base and which will generate significant additional revenue for Canada. Finance ministers also discussed next steps on implementation of this agreement, and we look forward to working together to bring this ambitious new tax framework into effect and to legislate its implementation. Meetings here this week have been an opportunity for Canada to discuss with our partners a range of issues, including climate action, addressing the needs of low-income and vulnerable middle-income countries, and future pandemic prevention and preparedness. Pour que notre relance soit équitable, il faut notamment améliorer l'équité dans le régime fiscal international freiner la tendance mondiale à réduire le plus possible le taux d'imposition des sociétés et nous assurer que toutes les sociétés, y compris les plus grandes du monde, paient leur juste part d'impôt. C'est pourquoi l'accord conclu vendredi entre 136 pays, dont le Canada, concernant les éléments du plan historique à deux piliers sur la réforme fiscale internationale est si importante. Le Canada a toujours privilégié les accords multilatéraux. Nous avons un intérêt national évident à l'égard de cet accord multilatéral qui protège contre l'érosion de l'assiette fiscale et va générer plus de revenus pour le Canada. Les ministres des Finances ont discuté des prochaines étapes à réaliser en vue de la mise en œuvre et nous avons bien hâte de travailler tous ensemble afin d'instaurer ce nouveau cadre fiscal ambitieux et d'inscrire sa mise en œuvre dans la loi. Les réunions que nous avons eu cette semaine nous ont permis de parler d'une diversité d'enjeux dans l'action climatique, répondre aux besoins des pays à faible revenu et des pays vulnérables à moyen revenu, ainsi que la prévention et la préparation en vue d'éventuelles pandémies. One thing is clear in Canada and around the world and that is the importance of vaccines and vaccination for us to get back to normal and to have a strong economic recovery. There is no more important economic policy than getting everyone vaccinated. This week has also been an important time in our work together on climate action Canada has a widely acknowledged world leading price on pollution and this week we continued our active exploration with international partners 
including at the G7, about how we can collaborate on carbon pricing, on carbon border adjustments, and on other tools to fight climate change. In addition to the broader international group meetings, I had some very valuable bilateral conversations. I met with U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen. I had a meeting with the German Vice Chancellor and Minister of Finance, Olaf Schulz. I met with the UK Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak. I met with Korea's Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of the Economy and Finance, Hong Nam Ki. I met with Italy's Minister of Economy and Finance, Daniele Franco. And I met with Mexico's Finance Secretary, Rogelio Ramirez de la O. Ce sera maintenant avec plaisir que je vais répondre à vos questions. Okay, bonjour, merci d'être venu. Uh, S'il vous plaît, dites votre nom puis le nom de votre organisation avant de poser vos questions. Um, we'll do one question, one follow-up from the microphone here, if that's okay. Hi, Minister. I uh, just wanted to, before I get to uh, two questions, the first one, just to confirm reports of a new cabinet that will be unveiled uh, October 25th. If you can confirm that and expand on that, please. You know what? I have the list of the whole cabinet, and I was... Mm -hmm forgot to read it off. Um, uh, the Prime Minister is hard at work on the transition uh, and is working hard at selecting his new cabinet and it will be a pleasure for him to reveal all of that in due course. In due course, is that on the 25th or? In due course. All right. Uh, and just back to the other issue that was announced yesterday uh, by the U.S. about uh, Canadians, about the land border crossing uh, being reopened. Uh, Canadians will still need a valid PCR test to get back into Canada. Are you thinking of changing this rule since being double vaxxed is good enough? You're quite right. Canadians do need a valid PCR test to go back to Canada. I had my tests done to go home this afternoon. I really believe that when it comes to finishing the fight against COVID, the Canadian approach, which has been to follow science, to follow the recommendations of public health authorities, and to err on the side of caution, has served us really, really well. Let's remember how much we have all sacrificed in this fight against COVID. We have spent more than 280 billion dollars on business and income supports and individual Canadians have struggled and suffered. My priority is to finish the fight against COVID, to allow our economy to continue to reopen, to allow our kids to continue to go to school. And yes, that does mean we need to continue to be prudent and careful. Hi, Katie Simpson, CBC News. Just to Hi, clarify, Katie. Nice Hi. to see you. Nice to see you as well, Minister, Deputy Prime Minister. Just to clarify on Richard's answer, that last line of your answer says, yes, continue to be prudent. So Canadians can expect the PCR policy they have to, when they return to Canada at a land border crossing, they have to present a negative PCR test that they've done 72 hours in advance. That policy is going to stay the same for now. Is that accurate? I am not making predictions about the future. And our government has been, throughout the pandemic, thoughtful about working with our public health authorities, working with scientists, working with doctors. And our measures have been flexible. And they have adapted to changing circumstances. And that, of course, will continue to be the situation. But it is the case. I'm going to be traveling from the US to Canada this afternoon. I had to get a PCR test, and I'm glad that I did, because that is an example of a continued prudent and careful policy. And let me just say, you know, we are winning the fight against COVID in Canada. We are getting the fourth wave under control. Crucially, our kids are back in school, and our economy is successfully reopening. I really believe that being that 
little bit more careful as we get through the next few weeks, as we see what the effect is of going back to school, as we see what the effect is of colder weather, is a really sensible Canadian approach. So if I'm a Canadian planning to go across the border, you know, the land border crossings reopened, should I expect to have to still get that test? And I, I'm sorry to belabor the point, I don't want to waste all my questions on this, but I just, I've never had more the emails rules, from the viewers. Rules are the, the rules are the rules, Katie, mm -hmm. and people should expect to follow the rules. Okay. Uh, the question I would like to ask on behalf of my colleagues in Ottawa, should the next Minister of Defence be a woman? The Prime Minister has been very clear, as he was beginning in 2015, when he appointed his first cabinet, that he is a feminist leader and he believes in a gender balanced cabinet and he's been clear that that is the kind of cabinet that he is building and that is fantastic for Canada and a great example for the world. I am not going to comment on any specific cabinet positions. That's the prerogative of the Prime Minister. Hello Minister James McCartan, Canadian Press. Um, while we're on the subject of travel, uh, one of the things that became apparent with the administration's announcement this week was that there are apparently parallels between how they want to approach the northern border and the southern border. And I'm wondering if maybe the time has come now after the experience that we've just had of should Canada start initiating a conversation of bifurcation? In other words, should we be talking, should we be asking the United States to look at the northern border separately and, and distinctly as opposed to the southern? You know, as a Canadian Minister of the Crown, I am very conscious of our country's national sovereignty, and that includes our own sovereign control over our borders. And I think Canadians are very conscious of that. And so I think that we need to be respectful of every other country's sovereign decisions around its own borders and of every other country's sovereign right to manage its borders as it sees fit. Having said that, I think it's also worth pointing out that Canada has a very effective, very close partnership with the United States, as we should. Our two countries share the world's longest unmilitarized border. Canada is the largest market for the United States, larger than China, Japan, and the UK combined. And that means that our relationship with the US and the US relationship with Canada is important to both sides. And that bilateral conversation is really critical. One of the important meetings I had this week was a bilateral meeting with Janet Yellen, the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, and we discussed a lot of bilateral issues, obviously, as well as some of the multilateral ones. Um, domestically speaking, the uh, vaccine passport system, is there anything you can tell us about how that's going to be administered? Is it going to be the federal government that handles it? Is it going to be left up to the airlines? What's the plan there? The Prime Minister made a very important announcement last week about the requirement for vaccination for people to travel, to take a plane, to take a train in Canada. And that is a really important part of the effort that I began my remarks with, which is getting as many people as possible vaccinated in Canada. In terms of the technical administration of that requirement, as the Prime Minister said, we are working very closely with the provinces and territories to implement that requirement. But the requirement is clear and people need to plan their lives accordingly. 
Hi, Minister Jackson Prosco with Global News. I actually wanted to follow up on the question about the borders. Uh, the fact that the Canadian and Mexican borders were treated the same way by the United States, the fact that there has been no permanent U.S. ambassador to Canada now in more than two years, certainly has a lot of people in the business community questioning whether that so-called special relationship between Canada and the U.S. still exists. Do you believe it still exists? Does more work need to be done to shore it up? And are you worried about the state of Canada-U.S. relations? Work needs to be done every single day, every single hour on the Canada-U.S. relationship. Uh, it is necessarily an absolute priority for every Canadian government, and it's a priority for us. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I was glad to be able to come to Washington this week and to have a formal bilateral meeting in the Treasury with Secretary Yellen, where we discussed a range of issues. We, our government, as I think we demonstrated during the NAFTA negotiations, understands the importance of the Canada-U.S. relationship. We know it takes a whole-of-government approach. We know, frankly, it takes a whole-of-country approach with business, unions, provinces and territories, all part of that effort. And that's something that we continue to work on every day. And if I may ask a question about the supply chain. Yesterday, President Biden announced a significant plan to deal with the backlog at ports, shipping shortages, and to make sure that people are getting their consumer goods. Is the government of Canada looking at anything similar? Because we know that ports in Canada are already warning that they're about to experience very similar backlogs. Um, that's a good question. And the issue of both supply chain congestion and supply chain shortages uh, was discussed at the G7 meeting, at the G20 meeting, at the broader IMF meeting, uh, and I discussed it with Secretary Yellen. Uh, so it's definitely a concern on the minds of finance ministers around the world. I was also glad this week to have the chance to talk about it with my South Korean counterpart, the Deputy Prime Minister of South Korea. Uh, they, South Korea has an interesting perspective and an important role in global supply chain, so it was good to talk directly with him, and we committed to continuing to work together. In terms of Canada, uh, we are definitely mindful of the supply chain issues in the Canadian economy. We are monitoring the supply chain and Canadian ports very, very closely. I do also want to say that broadly I am optimistic about the strength of Canada's economic recovery. I was particularly pleased, even delighted, by the very strong jobs numbers which we posted last week, uh, hitting our one million jobs milestone, which we committed to in the speech from the throne last September. Thanks to the resilience and hard work of Canadians, we have now hit that one million jobs mark. So just very quickly, do, do Canadians need to worry about supply chain shortages and the availability of goods heading into the holidays? I think Canadians should be confident in Canada. They should be confident in themselves. They should be confident in the resilience our country has demonstrated and confident in the robustness of our economic recovery. Now, what we have seen in Canada and around the world is that shutting down an economy as we had to do to fight COVID is a simpler process than turning an economy back on. Turning an economy back on in Canada and also around the world is inevitably uneven and that natural unevenness is compounded by the fourth wave of the coronavirus. So, you know, we need to be realistic about that, mindful of that, but I think we can also have a very confident outlook 
about Canada's economic resilience and about the strength of our recovery. Hello, Minister. Um, Alex Panetta, CBC News. Nice to see you, Alex. You used to visit so much more often. <laughs> um, just a question about, uh, about Buy American. I know the focus of your trip was really international in nature, but you know, we're down the street from uh, the capital where there are two major pieces of legislation that include, they're basically stuffed with Buy America provisions. Um, one of them is in flux. Um, did you pick up any intel he while here about what might be happening with some of those Buy American provisions and how concerned is the government of Canada about what uh, might be coming out of this Congress? I think that's a really good question and I would approach my answer slightly differently from the specific direction of your question to say, you know, my job here isn't, so, isn't only to pick up intel, although that's part of it. Um, my job is also to deliver messages. And when it comes to Buy America, it's important for the United States to understand that procurement is a reciprocal relationship. And while it is certainly the case that Canadian companies can play an important, valuable role in government procurement in the United States, it is also the case that U.S. companies benefit from government procurement opportunities in Canada. And ours is a government which has made clear commitments to invest in our recovery, which includes significant procurement opportunities. U.S. companies do about a billion dollars of business every year with the Canadian federal government. In the budget that I tabled in April, we committed to a reciprocal procurement approach. Reciprocal procurement means that Canada believes that the best value for Canada is free trade is being part of the global economy. Canada is a trading nation and we're pretty good at doing trade deals. Under a reciprocal procurement approach, what Canada is saying to our partners is our procurement opportunities will be open to your companies just as much as your procurement opportunities are open to ours. And that is something that I discussed with the Secretary of the Treasury. And uh, speaking there about procurement, uh, there's, there are also some provisions related to automobile uh, construction and incentives here. Um, your, I am your, aware of those. <laughs> your riding is pretty close to auto country in Canada. How worried are, uh, should Canadians be about some of the ideas being presented here um, in terms of incentives for, for um, electric vehicles built in the United States? Our government is very committed to the car sector. It is a really important source of great, high-paying, unionized jobs. And the car sector in Canada can and will be one of the industries which plays a key role in our country's green transformation as our country shifts to zero emission vehicles. So it's a focus, it's a priority. Uh, I am very aware of the proposals being discussed here in the United States, and that is also an issue which I discussed with the Secretary. And let me also say it, it's an issue which we are committed to working with business and labor leaders in Canada on and have already begun that work. Any sense from her, I know she doesn't control the process in Congress, any sense from her as to whether Canada might receive some sort of carve out as part of these? This, I think uh, that's a question for the Secretary. And the other question. Bonjour, Madame Freeland. Alors, Bonjour, Madame. Vous parlez de réciprocité. Je reviens sur le débat sur la COVID. Les frontières vont rouvrir entre les États-Unis et le Canada. Est-ce que vous avez une idée de la date exacte et également pourquoi les gens qui vont euh, aux États-Unis par la voie terrestre n'ont pas besoin de tests de COVID euh, s'ils sont doublement vaccinés alors que le, les gens qui rentrent au Canada doivent faire le test de PCR Vous parlez de réciprocité, pourquoi on ne fait pas la même chose 
concernant la date précise, euh, et nous avons discuté ça hier, euh, on est encore en train de discuter tous les détails avec nos partenaires américains et on va les préciser. Euh, concernant la question du dépistage, euh, c'est une mesure sanitaire, c'est une question euh, du, euh, des mesures sanitaires et je pense que chaque pays a le droit souverain de décider quelles sont les mesures sanitaires qu qui sont appropriées pour son, sa pays. Euh, comme j'ai déjà dit, euh, je veux souligner que finir la lutte contre la COVID, c'est une chose essentielle pour l'économie canadienne, pour la vie canadienne, pour les enfants canadiens et pour les écoles canadiennes. Et on fait la bonne chose maintenant. On a presque gagné la lutte contre la COVID. Mais c'est essentiel de finir la lutte. Et je pense que avoir une approche qui est prudente, c'est la bonne chose à faire maintenant. J'ai une question de mon collègue d'Ottawa sur les subventions salariales aux entreprises qui prennent fin le 23 octobre. Est-ce que vous comptez les prolonger? Euh, 60% de ces entreprises-là ont toujours, ont toujours le même niveau, euh, ont, ont toujours une perte de revenus, si vous voulez, de, euh, comparativement à avant la pandémie. Est-ce que vous comptez prolonger les subventions salariales et l'aide au loyer également? Et l'aide au... au loyer mm -hmm. pour les commerçants. Um, merci pour la question. Uh, et c'est vraiment un uh, enjeu qu'on est en train de discuter avec le premier ministre, avec les économistes dans le département de finances, avec les entreprises uh, canadiennes. Uh, comme j'ai dit, uh, la, réouverture, la réouverture de l'économie canadienne va bien. Et tous les Canadiens doivent être fiers de ça. Mais en même temps, on a toujours la quatrième vague du COVID et on a toujours des mesures qui sont en place pour freiner la propagation du COVID, comme les mesures aux frontières. Pendant la campagne électorale, on a fait un promis aux Canadiens de continuer d'aider les entreprises les plus durement touchées on est en train maintenant de discuter, d'analyser la situation aujourd'hui et de discuter ce qu'on doit faire. Mais c'est le 23 octobre. Est-ce que ça va Je prendre fin le 23 octobre? Je le sais. Merci. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Nice to see you all. Thanks for coming. Long time. I know. I was. It's. It's like old times seeing you all. At least we're not uh, dying of heat exhaustion outside USTR. So thanks very much for your hard work. Thanks all of you for being here. Au revoir. Merci.